very good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cricket Podcast with me, Jack Hope, Ross Leg. How are you doing, Ross? Marvellous, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Max Roe Brown, how are you doing, Max? Hello, very good, thank you, Jack. And joining us as a special guest on today's show is the Bear from Gorilla Cricket. How are you doing, the Bear? I'm doing okay, guys. I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, On this week's show, we will be talking about Australia v India, the third test wrapped up last night. And it's fair to say India pulled off a remarkable um, draw in the end as they batted out the whole day despite being two wickets down uh, as play commenced and despite injuries to Jadeja and Pant. Uh, Then we will be moving on to talk about England and Sri Lanka. England's tour against Sri Lanka starts this Friday. Uh, with two matches, both at Gaul. Uh, We'll be going into the two teams there and what we expect to take place over those two matches. But before we get into the meat and drink of this week's show, boys, it's the first question. Uh, This week, inspired by Tim Payne, who, um, it's fair to to say, disgraced himself (laughs) a little bit um, (laughs) in the third session of yesterday's match. Uh, My question is, and we'll start with you, Max, uh, which player would you hate to play with the most? So I've I've gone for a slightly different angle on this rather than just genuine dislike of someone. I've decided that I really wouldn't want to play, particularly if I were an England test player with Nasser Hussain, because you would lose every single toss. (laughs) And you don't want to be going into bowl (laughs) at the whacker when you're on the first game of your series, standing around for three, three days. I reckon he'd be a bit of a hard, hard taskmaster as well. He'd, he'd really make you work hard, and, and you you would be playing in that sort of late nineties, early two thousands team that was terrible. So no matter how hard you worked, you are eventually going to lose. So I, I think that's um that's a very well thought through answer there, Max. Um, Ross, what do you think? Who do you hate the most? <laughs> so I'm not sure if like everyone else, but I've got like a dickhead eleven, and the captain of that dickhead eleven is Salman Butt. He's <laughs> He's psychopathic. He's a pathological liar. Um, he'd definitely prey on other people, try and take advantage of the youths in the team. Um, he'd probably try to sell you a member of his family if he thought he could make a quick buck. And he's not very smart, as he eventually got caught, didn't he? So um, all in all, all-round shit bloke, Salmon Butt. Uh, I think um, another well-thought-through answer there, <laughs> um, <laughs> Ross. Um, Bear. Over to you. Which player would you least like to play cricket with? <clears throat> well, he was playing in a game last night. He scored a couple of tons. No, he's got a ton in the first. I, I hate Steve Smith. <laughs> Steve Smith is the bane of English. Every English man's, you know, life. Uh, <laughs> started out his career as a, a supposed leg spinner, and and someone on our show said he'd get 200 wickets and 2,000 runs, and we all just laughed at her. He's certainly <laughs> never going to get 200 wickets. He's certainly got more than 2,000 runs, and he's turned into off into something. But he's so annoying. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I couldn't play with him. Do you not think with Steve Smith though that he's one of those players who you'd love to have on your team? Uh, the the Diego Costa of international cricket, if you like. Well, he'd score all the runs for you, but he's, he's got annoying ticks. He looks like a pig. And, uh, you know, I mean, our nickname for him is the pig, you know, because when he started, he doesn't look so much like a pig now, but when he started, he had a really upturned snout. And he was also really annoying. And he wasn't very good when he started. So, are you, you, know. are you saying that Steve Smith's had a nose job in the proceedings? It does sound like it, doesn't it? <laughs> well, he could have done, or his face could have just got bigger. I mean, everyone's face grows, and he started very young. Uh, that would be a big scoop, wouldn't it, if we revealed uh, the Steve Smith blow, uh, nose job. <laughs> well, I will tell you this. In the, in, the, in the BBL, all those Australian players have got those terrible tashes. I don't know what's going on in Australia at the moment, but they're having a That's terrible time. That's been going on for years, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I know, but they've all got it's it the whole, now. It's they? the whole right. antipodes as well. They're doing it in New Zealand. Uh, it's a disgrace, I'll tell you. That's it. I, I think I would go with... Um, Steve Smith's partner in crime. I don't think I could stand Marnus Labuschagne. Just the 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 amount of time you'd have to spend with someone who's clearly really really annoying. Um, I'm always I mean in general I'm always suspicious of people who like cricket too much because there's a lot about cricket which which actually is a bit rubbish. Um and and he can't seem to see that. He's an irrational man. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I, I, it does. 
Yeah, I could definitely get behind that. And I think um isn't he he's he's a big um he's a big Bible fan as well. And we know I know you're not a massive fan of the Bible, Jack. It's, it's, um, not, it's not one of your favourite books, is it? Uh, you know, we're three or four minutes into the show, let's not go down that that, that route. Um <laughs> we we've got some interesting opinions on, on uh Virat Kohli and uh, etc. coming up in the next twenty five minutes, which I'm sure will annoy some people. So I'll let's deal um, with religion another day. Yeah, let's hedge our bets <laughs> on um, Let's, let's eviscerate our listener base one podcast at a time. On, um, right. on viewpoints. Um, Ross, what do we need to tell our listeners before we move on to talk about uh, that third test? Uh, they can find us on Instagram and Twitter, and they should follow us at The Cricket Pod. Um, and they should also leave us a review on iTunes, follow us on Spotify, or whatever podcast platform you listen on. That's good. Um, we'll take a quick break, and we will be back with India v Australia. It was a fine second innings from India, who, for a brief moment, had the Aussies fearing a repeat of Headingley. Um, Rishabh Pant blazed a crunching counter-attack whilst the wall of Pajara stood firm. Uh, the win wasn't to be, but the injured Joe of Vahari and Ashwin battled for 289 deliveries to secure what is a fantastic draw. Um, Jack, what a fantastic spectacle. And, uh, I mean, there were some cracking performances for, for both Australia side and India side. Uh, where would you like to begin? Final day drama or kind of the performances throughout? Should we start with Rishab Pant? I feel like, I feel like Pant is the, is the real story of this test. Um, he, the people, people listening won't won't have access to our WhatsApp group, but um, for <laughs> Ross and Max, you'll know that uh, after the third day, was it? I said to you two that I'd come to the conclusion that Rishab Pant wasn't actually very good at cricket. Um, but this is the Pant conundrum, isn't it? And 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 he comes back two days later with one of the most dominant sessions I think I've seen. Um, from a cricketer in 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 years, he um, going into the going into the fifth day. Obviously, India they they well needed to bat ninety overs with eight wickets in hand. The first they lose a wicket in the in the first over, and uh, that that brings Pant to the crease. Who who um, I don't know if he promoted himself or or was asked to be asked if, whether he wanted to be promoted and said yes. But he came out to bat five instead of six. Uh, and after sort of getting himself in for about an hour, he uh, he dismantled Nathan Lyon. Uh, in, in 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 astonishing fashion, he he basically hit him for six after six after six in a game where India didn't need to to do that. Um, remarkable stuff. What what did you make of it, Max? I I think um, to be honest with with uh, with Pant, you have to look at his performance across the whole of the test, and it really gives you an idea of what he's like. Because you know the, there was a bit of a bit of wicket keeping uh, mishap going on. Us us going well, he's he's rubbish, and then he gets injured. Saha comes in and takes some catches, which is uh, convenient, and um, and then Pant comes out and blasts the ball all over the place and shows us why people rate him so highly. And I think it was just yeah, it was Pant in microcosm really. You sort you sort of uh, it was it was you get either the sublime or the ridiculous with with Pant. It's like I think there's. There's almost two of him. It's like there's a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think Pants is actually a brilliant player. So uh, when you when you say us that bad mouth him, I don't think I've ever bad mouthed Pant. Um, you've think... certainly you've certainly made comments about his fitness. Yeah, but that's not bad mouthing, is it? That's just uh, a <laughs> well, friendly. It's not good mouthing. F- fr- fr- friendly poking. Um, <laughs> But he now averages over forty in Test cricket max, which I thought was. Uh, and that's that's sort of that's sort of like the level, isn't it? You, you say that's for, for some reason people have decided that forty is when you become really good. <laughs> Thirty nine, not quite there. <laughs> I I I was watching this, um, and I mean I don't know. I mean like we've all seen people bat out 
a tr- uh, or, or try and bat out a, a, a final day. I I still right now can't really get my head round what what Pant was doing. Um, it was virtually insane. Is is how I, I I would describe it. Like he he despite all of the evidence and all of um, the history of cricket suggesting that he shouldn't be doing what he was doing, he took it on. And um, I, I, I think sort of by lunchtime, so I, I went to it, that's 1.30 a.m. UK time. And that's when I decided uh, I can't watch any more of this. <laughs> uh, but India needed about 200 of 65 overs at that point. And it, and it, and it, and it really looked like... Um, Rishabh Pant was going to more or less single-handedly win it because whilst Pant was doing this, no one had told Pajara that the chase was on. He, he was still blocking the shit out of the ball, um, and and uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's just a stunning, stunning performance. I on a day five wicket as well. Um, Pajara Bear, uh, what do you make of him? Well, Pajara is an amazing test player, isn't he? You can't put him in any other team for anything else. But um, for a test match, he, he's solid. And when you say about Pant, I mean, listen, uh, we have the same problem with Butler, don't we? Keepers who don't keep very well, but, you know, have an amazing batting sort of pedigree. Uh, and occasionally you remember they do something really well. Um, but let's not forget, he could have been out twice before he got to 50 or once before 50 and shortly after. You know, they should have caught him. A better wicket keeper would have done. Um, and he actually you look at his foot movement and the crease. You know, those shots, that, that six he hit over extra cover, his feet were on leg stump and his bat was a foot outside off stump. He just swung through the ball and he's a, he's got a good eye for a ball. He plays a lot of IPL. He can hit a ball um, and he got away with it. And I, I, like you, I went to bed at 1.30 and I thought, there's a chance here, there's a chance here. But you've seen this happen all too often. Someone comes out, does the counter punch, all looks wicked, wicked falls, and then it all crumbles. And I kind of figured that would how it would go. And then when I got up this morning, the scorecard, I was like, wow. I mean, Vahari, I've seen in the in the uh, in the IPL, he's all right, but you know, he doesn't strike me as a man who's going to be out there for two hundred and what was it, ninety odd balls or whatever, for twenty odd or whatever it was he got. You know, it's uh, so I was quite surprised. But these things do happen. Um, and if keepers don't keep their catches, then Kudos to them for getting there, as far as I'm concerned. As- also, <laughs> I hate Australia, so I don't particularly <laughs> like India either. But anyone who does anything to Australia on their home patch is is good by me. <laughs> well, as, as the saying goes, uh, dropping catches will lose you matches, right? So, um, a lucky Tim Absolutely. Payne. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Jack, let, let's let's move on to um, some of the other players. So, if you look at kind of the bowling performance from from India what, are there a, and a couple of injuries that happened as well along the way um well I think there were two weren't there there uh well I mean and then there was another one later but in terms of affecting the bowling um Jadeja uh was hit in the hand and, and broke his thumb um maybe out actually for the first of the India tests against England so that's um a little, a little bit of a blow for them I don't think I think the if Pan is the headline for this test and Pajara is uh, is, is brought up in the first paragraph of your write up uh, batting as he did sixty five overs, which is which is two whole sessions for one man. He, he batted two whole sessions <laughs> <laughs> and only scored about one hundred and twenty across the test as well. Um, the the third point that I think contributed to uh, the result was the pitch. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to take too much agency away from what was uh, a pretty incredible performance from India on that fifth day, but it was a fairly attritional test match across all five days. Um, it was one of those ones where if you, for you, I, I was watching it. I watched all five morning sessions and, and, and I did think that you, I could sympathise with people who don't love Test cricket. Watching some of that, it was um, it it was to to use a a um, well, it was boring <laughs> <laughs> for for extended periods. And I I, I do think um, day five probably the pitch should do a bit more. It should be a bit harder than it actually was for Pant to just stand there and throw his hand through the ball. Um, although. You know, both teams got their go on the wicket, and um, and like I don't, I don't want to take too much agency uh, away from from India there. Yeah, well, you do make your luck though, don't you? You know, and he did make his luck, and he was dropped. So you know, uh, you can only do what you're asked to do, and he did it. Um, 
Yeah, I agree. I agree yeah. with that. And I think um, it was good to see that Rohit Sharma was kind of back in and among the rungs almost immediately. Um, Shrubman Gill as well it looked like a pretty decent opening partnership, um, which England are probably going to be a bit fearful of <laughs> uh, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, d- do we want to mention any of the good Australian performances? I mean, we've heard from Bear that he hates Australia and we can't completely blank um, the the people that did well for them if, if we like. It is tempting. Uh, uh, well, it, yeah. it's, 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 it's quite it's quite difficult to ignore that Smith and Marner scored 376 runs between them in the yeah, test match. No, so. I mean, yeah, that's, um, you expect that though. We've we've basically gone in with the exciting bit and not set any of the context for why it was exciting. Um, which, if you watch the cricket, it's fine. Uh, if you didn't, you the, the the first four days, it's it's it was a reasonably dominant performance from Australia, and I think actually um, Tim Payne said it was his worst day in cricket. Uh, it's, which which presumably uh, knocks Headingley 2019 off off its perch, <laughs> but that that kind of gives you an indication of how on top Australia were. I mean, most of day four, if you or most of the, sp- the cricket I watched on day four, was um, soundtracked by Australian commentators talking about when in- Australia should declare because they'd already got enough runs, and this was they were about 250 ahead. Um, it, it 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 looked like. Um, the predictions we all made, uh, or, or the predictions that, that, that Ross, Max, and myself made before the match, were going to come true, and it, and it was going to be two-one to India. Um, and that, if we apportion, if we apportion, um, what's the opposite of blame? Praise. Praise. <laughs> Praise. <laughs> Not <laughs> is, a concept is... that we're particularly familiar with, but we'll give it <laughs> yeah. a go. Yeah. Uh, was largely down to um, Steve Smith scoring 130, uh, Labuschagne getting a what did he get uh, a 90 and 70? Yeah. yeah, he uh, he has 50s in half or more than half of his home tests now, so uh, you know a, a little bit of a force. Um, <laughs> and, and they and they did play well. Um, it, it, the, a slightly dead pitch and um, probably a career performance from from Pan um, had other ideas on day five though. Yeah, nothing to be also taken away from the likes of Hazelwood and Cummings, who again just demonstrated their ability to be test level bowlers. They are both absolutely class, but is there just a bit of a mental block on that final day wrapping things up? You've seen before, like Stark comes in, Cummings comes in, and they rattle through tails. When they're when they've got a team that's fighting against them, they've, uh, I'm not sure if they've got not the yips, but there's definitely a bit of an overhang from that Headingley game. Well, yeah, cricket's a mental game. It's played as much in the head. Uh, and if you can get on top of the bowlers and, and just not get out to them, Pajara is an absolute star at that. I mean, the man can stand there and not bother hitting a thing. If it's not on his stumps, he just doesn't bother, you know. Um, and have the mental ability to do that as a batsman is quite astonishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you can get in the in the bowlers' heads, I mean, it only takes that one wicket to change all this, of course. Uh, and which is why I thought Pam would get out and then everything would crumble. And, and, and kudos to the guys coming and Ashwin. We knew thought Ashwin had been out. I mean, he's had a past as where he's been batting all right, but he doesn't look particularly hot on this tour. Uh, and a game I saw at the end of the last game, um, they were bouncing him left, right, and centre, and he got hit on the shoulder. And I, I assume they've tried that again, and he got away with it this time. We'll play better. I think he got hit four it. times, so they they gave him a little bit yeah. of a barrage. Yeah, they, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, when, when Ashwin, I mean, when Ashwin lo- comes out to bat, he looks like the kind of thing that that his dad has just bought him a load of new cricket kit. And well, exactly. He doesn't look like he's got a technique particularly, does he? Um, <laughs> he's obviously got a little bit of an eye. I mean, he scored a test ton or two, hasn't he? He's, he's, got, got, four, he's, got, he's got four. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, he's clearly got some sort of ability. But, uh, you know, for them to stick out for the rest of the day is quite amazing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's absolutely uh, fair to say that cricket's a, a mental game. But I, I think, I mean, how much do you think that played into the rearguard action that we saw from v- Vihari and, and Ashwin, because, you know, I mean, India, aside, you know, putting aside the bit, which I'm sure we'll get to, of Tim Payne's uh, antics, uh, before it even gets to that stage where you can clearly see that India have got Australia rattled by their behaviour, is the um, sort of, well, what's happened to India over the past uh, few days, and then also the, the thing with... Um, uh, than potentially threatening to to not play the last test because of the uh, the bubble issue, the number of injuries they've sustained with uh, Jadeja and then Vahari's hamstring and Pant as well. How, how much do you think do you think that's played into a sort of uh, siege mentality where where you can see them like really digging in because they think it's just you know they they have to fight at this stage. Are you comparing Ajinka Rahane 
to Jose Mourinho. Is that what you're doing there, Max? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far because uh, with with the Mourinho, the siege mentality is imagined. Where in this case, <laughs> India did actually suffer from <laughs> a bout of injuries and. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I saw a really good tweet which basically um, sums up the, the, the point I think you're making or, or doesn't sum up the point you're making but does um, does Answer does it. add to it yeah. um, uh, it basically was uh, Chite- oh, Jose Mourinho would fucking love Pajara and that is definitely <laughs> like, um, oh, and yeah. it's definitely Certainly true would. I mean like it takes a lot of mental energy and, and, and physical stamina as well to bat for 65 overs uh, in, a, in a test match and, and as well in the, in the first things Pajara he came in for a little bit of flack because he scored at about a run every three balls. And I think that's because the pitch was shit as much as anything, to be honest. Um, or not shit, but slow. Uh, it, was mm. a, it was a hard pitch to score runs on. And it was a hard pitch to get out on. Um, and he, he caught a bit of flack for that. And I, I think it was almost like every single one. I mean, he, he blocked. I mean, he must have, must have faced 200 dot balls across his innings. Um, it was almost like every single one of those was a little little bit of a rebuke to Ricky Ponting and Co. <laughs> in the Australian commentary box. Um, I bet Jeff Boycott was loving it. Yeah. I, uh, I, we, we had some tweets in it, and we, 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 Ross, you we were just talking about Cummins uh, mm. ha, uh, and uh, how he may have been able to run through the tail. Um, he only bowled 17 overs of the 90 uh, or 88 sent down on day five. That's surely he's been underbold there. Yeah, I think um, Tim Payne's captaincy is always one of those things that um, he was brought in as uh, the captain with the only option kind of thing to rebuild the baggy green, have the faith in it. And I mean, that facade, as we'll come on to, kind of fell away a little bit. Um, but he's got kind of previous in this. Like Headingly, he picked the wrong bowlers, picked the wrong tactics. And it's not something that I'm kind of surprised at, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I also think that when things aren't going their way, they're like Stark doesn't get them out of trouble actually that much. Stark is one of their bowlers who, when their tails are up, he rattles through teams. I don't see him though going out and grabbing all of the headlines and winning them all the test matches like some of the people like say Stuart Broad does for England. I think you can maybe file Lyon under that category as well. Um, I, I'm sure. I mean, like maybe I'm wrong, but I, I bet you he bowls better in 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 big wins. Are you saying and, the Aussies um, are bullies? Uh, that's basically what we're saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think they are. Yeah, um, there were. We saw so a couple of people on Twitter uh, wanted to know what our thoughts were on the on the respective captaincies after after or at, at this point in the series. Um, Tim Payne. We, we, we'll do this. We'll answer this question. Then we'll get onto what Tim Payne did. He was a very naughty boy. <laughs> um, Tim Payne. Uh, just quickly. Should he stay as Australian captain for, say, the next 12 months till after the Ashes, or, or should they maybe move on? And, and who could replace him? Start Bear, we'll start with you if that's uh, all right. Well, they obviously want to go back to Smith, but they just got to learn. I mean, look, look if we, got, we want to go back to Sam Papergate, and it's an absolutely ridiculous state of affairs that Australia banned three players for a bloody year for pool tampering. I mean, what bollocks is that? I'm sorry. I mean, what? Faf de Plessis had been caught twice in the previous year and got a slap on the wrist. I think Root or some, one of the English players have been caught mints in a man. I mean, it goes on all the damn time. And Australia did the whole crying routine about, oh, God, you know, and bah, the baggy green and all this bollocks. It's just nonsense. I'm sorry. They shouldn't have been banned for a year for a start. It was fun to watch them cry. <laughs> um, but they clearly, they should go back to Smith because Smith is the natural leader of that side. Um, I mean, everyone, I mean, in the ashes over here, when he was back, everyone kind of deferred to him anyway. You know, and he's di- you know he was getting pissed off with Payne, and he's directing stuff in the field. Um, Payne is not a very good leader. It, but do I, do I, do should, I, your captain, it. well, your captain should lead from the front. Yeah, but it depends. Payne's never going to be a leader from the front. So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to disagree slightly on the, the not being a good leader. I think in the terms of kind of the adversity that the well, almost the made up own adversity that Australia cricket well, was that. going through. But you still have to lead people through it. They were in a pretty terrible position. They got hammered in the UAE. I mean, I watched the tests. So I'll just I'll re- everyone's seen that, so I'll just regurgitate that. But I thought that the way in which he's done that is fine. I think to the point now is he's probably run out of rope. He's kind of done what he needed to do. He was there for the period. And he, I mean, the performances they had have been not bad. Um, I don't think Steve Smith is the answer, though. I mean, even looking at him, he's always, he's just... Well, he's not. He's, he's, a, he's, he's an accident waiting to happen. But um, the Who players else is will there? follow him. They're not, they're not going to follow Warner. And that'll be shown, as you said, is a bit kooky in the head. <laughs> 
Uh, who else is there? I mean, the only other one is you could have is Cummins, possibly. Um, but I, I mean, my own personal view is that a bowler should never really be captain. Mm. Um, bowlers always make the wrong bowling changes and always <laughs> think they're going to be the one who's going to do the job and tend to bowl themselves too much. So I, a wicketkeeper is a good choice as a captain. Otherwise, it should be a batsman because the batsman's place is always set, particularly. Uh, so you don't have to really worry about that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, I, w- I would stick with pain. That, I don't know. I, I, I would stick think, with pain for yeah. twelve months. I don't. I don't really see what their other option is no. uh, in terms of wicket keeping. He has uh, the second highest batting average for an Australian wicket keeper after Adam Gilchrist, uh, which is decent. Uh, he. How many tests? Uh, he must have played thirty tests now. Must have played at least thirty tests. Uh, he has won ten of seventeen, I think, as 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 captain. So maybe actually no, maybe I mean doing the, doing the maths on that, it's probably not thirty, is it? It's probably more twenty five. Um, and um, and I, 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 and I think the only real alternative at the moment is, is Pat Cummins, and I think they might eventually go with Pat Cummins, but um, possibly not yet. Might as well give uh, it a go at some point. Max, we'll we'll flip it round and we'll talk about India. Because the the question we had in from Third Man Cricket uh, uh, followed up with would um, would you, would you give the uh, the proverbial armband as it is in cricket to uh, um, Ajinka Rahani? It's um, over it's, Virat Kohli. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's an emotive question that one, isn't it? But I've I've <laughs> always been in the in the camp of your captain is not your best player; it is your best captain, and whether that's Virat Kohli or Ajinka Rahani, I can't really answer because i don't watch enough indian test cricket <laughs> but the evidence that i've the very small amount of evidence that i've um, had put before me is that virat's played one and lost one and um ajinkia <laughs> rahani's unbeaten in two so <laughs> there's no, um, no question i mean Kohli did win win the previous series uh so you know uh, kept him, kept him at number one in the world for three years on the bounce. He, he was doing an okay job. I yeah, think I mean, say. Coley, on uh, balance, <laughs> it has to go wrong for for Coley to have it taken away from him. Like you've given it to Coley, if unless he does something terrible, there's no point taking it away from him. Does anyone think that's a serious possibility to, that, that that Coley or, or a serious thing that <laughs> India should even consider? You, you know when um, you know when in in football they say that no player is bigger than the club. Virat Kohli's definitely bigger than the Indian Test team. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but there's just there's just no way around it. If Rahane pulls off a win at the Gabba, there'll be serious questions to be asked. But it's still the answer will still be Virat Kohli is captain of India. Yeah, I think Rahane's kind of understated, isn't he? he, he he's getting a job done, but he, he's not. I don't think he's the kind of guy who inspires. Comp- you know, he doesn't have that get up and go thing that Kohli has or Smith has or. And I think you need a bit of that in a captain. Yeah. Um, um, Rahani, you can use Rahani's knowledge and you know experience and, and ideas. Absolutely. That's why captain. he's a great so, vice captain, though. Yeah. Precisely. It, it, you know, he's there for experience. It works as a team. So why why change it? Yeah. F- fellas, we've dished out a reasonable amount of praise so far, and, it, and, it, and I think um, although the, I had a little bit of criticism about the uh, the pitch, I think it was a really good test. It sets up a fantastic fourth test which we'll talk about in a second um, but we should talk about the various controversies in this match um, two of them certainly more light-hearted than the third uh, Ross um, Tim Payne and Steve Smith they weren't very very good boys were they in the in, the, in on that fifth day yeah so um, let's start with Steve Smith because he's a bit of a storm in a teacup there was a, on on the camera um, it caught him just shadow batting and doing his guard um, but this is while he's fielding. This is while yeah, he's fielding. fielding. And he's not, batting, yeah. yeah, and he's not going to bat again. His second innings, he's got to it. And um, he's deliberately or accidentally, doesn't really matter, mucked up pants mark. So his mark for, against the stumps at the crease. Um, and the media's oh, Steve Smith cheating again, cheating again. I don't see it that way at all. Uh, Jack, what did you think about it? I, I just saw it as a kind of a... It, even if it's maybe against the spirit of the game, if he did it deliberately, one relatively annoying it's quite it's quite funny two pant can just take his guard again nothing yeah, nothing's gonna nothing's I, changing I, I i think storm on a teacup storm <laughs> in a teacup yeah whatever that's um, <laughs> um <laughs> sort of does it justice in my opinion i i mm-hmm. couldn't care less they bowled 12 overs an hour like yeah. there was time for pant to redo his, his guard um i don't i don't think he did it on purpose i mean when when this happened live nobody gave a shit 
It's only when I woke <laughs> up in the morning that people were like, oh, look at Steve Smith, he's cheating again. But um, he's, has he not brought that on himself as as a man who's you know done the whole ball tampering and been banned for a year, blah, blah, blah? Do you yeah, not think you should consider here? your actions a little bit more? I mean, I, I, I'll i um, caveat that by saying I, can, I completely agree that it's a bit of a mountain of a molehill because at the end of the day, the only thing he's doing is wasting more time for his own team because Pant has to retake his guard. <laughs> What's he brought on himself, though? I mean, like a few people... Um, mainly English fans, actually, uh, from what I can mainly tell. Mainly Michael Vaughan. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're moaning yeah, well. about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, uh, some of it, to me, smacked a little bit of, of people trying to insert themselves into the story. Um, yeah, well, um, well you, know, you know what I say around this. Lock him up. Prison for Steve Smith on this. <laughs> Get rid of him. Get rid Bear, of him. Bear, but- you hate Australia. Are we wrong? <laughs> Uh, no, you're not wrong. I think it's, uh, these kinds of things just annoy me, as you say. It's pointless. I mean, what? So, I mean, I've seen plenty of players on TV when you've been watching a Test match do that, stand at the crease. Maybe sometimes they are going to go out and bat again and having a look at the wicket. But crying, I've seen it. I've seen England players do it. Yeah. What's the big deal? And as you say, you can mark your bloody guard again. And usually they've dug a trench anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, try disrupting yeah. Jonathan Trott's guard. That's a, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> digger with you. It's about three foot long and about a foot deep, you know. <laughs> uh, I, d- I did hear about, what did Payne actually say? Because I heard he was a bit, you know, he started... Well, this is the second point, slipped. isn't it? Um, Ross, have you got the quotes? Uh, no, I, don't, no, I haven't got well, the luckily. exact... Luckily. Yeah, I haven't got the exact <laughs> quotes, I haven't, yeah. Oh, so I, I have. Yeah, yeah, we know them by heart. Basically, Tim Payne, standing behind the stumps, was saying something to Ashwin. Uh, this, the beginning of it's not picked up on the stump mic, really. Uh, Ashwin steps back uh, uh, so that the bowler can't bowl. Uh, Tim Payne takes offence to that. He says, we can't wait to get you to the Gabba, Ash. Uh, and then Ashwin straight away says, I can't wait to get you to India. It will be your last series. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good report. No. Uh, doesn't miss a beat. Doesn't miss a beat. Uh, Tim Payne hits for he gets he he loads up the artillery and he comes back with yeah. Well, at least my teammates like me. Um, you did. You, <laughs> you forgot the dickhead. Bit. Oh yeah. yeah, dickhead. Yeah. Uh, signs up okay. for the dickhead and um, Ashwin continues to block the shit out of it. But uh, this is I think at this point Payne knew the game was up. Uh, so, just, so he just thought he'd embarrass himself, did yeah. he? Yeah, just yeah. Thought he'd having, him. having been one of the main actors in the game being up, from the Australian <laughs> point of yes, view, no. he's decided uh, t- to... Two overs later, he dropped probably the last chance, I think, for Hari. Uh, edged one, two, first slip, and Payne goes across one-handed, uh, puts the ball down, and uh, that's that's all she wrote for, for Australia. Did, <laughs> did, did he not catch what Ashwin said after that? I, did, I, had a, I don't, I think I said it. something quite fruity. <laughs> I think Ashwin was just like, you're a fucking idiot, mate. <laughs> well, exactly. That's what I'd have said. Fuck you, bitch. Uh, it's, uh, it, in many ways, he didn't have to say anything. The, the argument was so one. Uh, yeah, it, just it a was, little wink is all you needed. It was that basically, phase, I know you are, but what am I from, from Tim Payne, wasn't it? At the, so, at, and what, at the I think what I like about this is that Ashwin is a bowler who bats a bit. He's got four test centuries. Um, Tim Payne is captain of Australia, wicketkeeper batsman, <laughs> zero test centuries. Um, Tim Payne has dropped three catches in the match or three catches in their innings. Um, and then well, I, I just didn't understand where he was coming from at all with what he was trying to achieve. Like Ashwin is also not the kind of guy you sledge in that way. If you're going to sledge Ashwin, it's about building up the ego. Oh, Ash, you're amazing. You're <laughs> so good, Ashwin. Because Ashwin is above it. Ashwin is an elite pro. He is an elite pro, one of the best cricketers in the world. Tim Payne's all right. And, yeah, and yeah. an elite pro at the dark arts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking to the the, the Mancad in chief. of Mancads, yeah. like it's uh, yeah, <laughs> cheating bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I um, yeah, I thought I, it's. I think Tim Payne just got a bit hot and bothered. It's 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 caused a little bit of uh, uh, an online melee. Um, <laughs> quite a lot of people are getting some digs in at Tim Payne, saying it's the same old Australia. Uh, rearing its ugly yeah. head. Well, uh, uh, that's, that's a thing that he's brought on himself as well, isn't it? By saying, you know, I'm the I'm well, the Australia <laughs> captain, and I'm here to like usher in this new era of us being nice. In mate, the you're, you're honestly the like you're like a mum at a parents' evening. You are Max. <laughs> no, oh, he's just brought it. On. He's not done his homework. He's brought it on himself. Ross, <laughs> this is this is literally what he said after Warner and Smith were banned for a, for a year for ball tampering and you know the big storm and then the PM got involved and denounced everyone and it was all a bit ridiculous. And Tim <laughs> Payne says, mad. "No, we're going to be we're going to be nice now. We're going to be nice Australians." And obviously the the mask slipped. 
yeah. Australians are never nice. One thing. Uh, secondly, uh, sledging, sledging. A, I mean, I don't know if you guys play, but I play for years, and it goes on, and it's pretty pathetic, whatever which way it goes. I've never heard of uh, one. No. No, I mean, my captain at my club, where I played for, under him for about 20 years, an absolute twat, and he used to come up with the worst ones ever. It's embarrassing, to be fair. Um, send off some bowlers. I mean, everyone goes on about that. It's a similar sort of thing. I don't have a problem with that. I think uh, it's like scoring a goal in football. You're, you're at the top end of the sport plan, test cricket on telly yeah. as an international. Um, someone's digging in like shape of Pajara or someone. Mm. You get them out and a rip snort a ball. I, I, if you're in that split second, you think, thank God I got him out, and you say something to him, send off. All you have to do is apologise afterwards. I think anyone who's played sport yeah. at that sort of level completely understands that, and it always gets overblown. That's my view on that whole Yeah, I'd probably thing agree with that. And, and you have stump mics now, so it all gets picked yeah. up and never used to get picked up in a park. I think with wickets in particular, the best bowlers in the world take a wicket every eight to ten overs, which is, which is yeah. a, it's more than an hour of test cricket, if that's a spell. Uh, if you if you averaged it out, so they're they're quite rare events, and I, I I think that explosion of emotion is good. This sort of stuff, which was basically Tim Payne, maybe trying to put Ashwin off, maybe failing yeah, miserably, maybe just, badly. <laughs> yeah, like um, I think it comes across as as uh, quite literally, and 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 and, and makes him look pathetic well isn't isn't uh, the main issue from the point of uh any like fines and things that he said dickhead well he also swore at the umpire recently yes, in the game as yeah, well so yeah, he's, he's already he's already lost 15 percent yeah. he's not he's not he's not covered himself in glory has he pain no in, in yeah and speaking of not covering yourself in glory it brings us on to the final part of this and um unfortunately the game was marred with some racism um, which Mohammed siraj was on the end of and i think also jasper Bumra. Um, from a selection of idiots. I'm not even going to say they were Aussie fans. We don't know. They were just uh, six scumbags who were escorted from the uh, from the ground. Um, it's pretty pretty bad, especially when you've when you've got a reduced capacity at the game. One, whilst why, why would you ever think of doing it? And two, like it's just damn right stupidity, isn't it? Well, I mean, I I think this is. It's not a difficult one because the answer to this is really obvious, and and and, and the whole well, not the the answer to it isn't obvious. Um, the 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 our take on this is going to be yeah. reasonably obvious i think mm. um so first of all the 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 actual instance there were two incidents one i think late on day 3 again we would would have been would have been asleep so we've seen this all reported and uh, a few people on twitter have sent us links um uh where 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 there is no footage but uh, i think a couple of indian players reported that they'd received racist abuse on on the on the uh, at the end of the third day and then on the fourth day um, Mohammed Siraj is standing on the boundary and he's being heckled and something happens and he during the game stops they stop the game for about 10 minutes uh, while uh, six or eight Australian fans are ejected now there is an ongoing investigation that Cricket Australia or Sydney Police are um, are, are conducting uh, but if you want to see, I, th- I think basically the moment in question, there is a video circulating on the internet uh, where it sounds a lot like someone basically said, calls Siraj a brown dog. Um, so they they are heckling him. They're calling him Shiraz. They they do it. They're really drunk. You can tell that this this pocket of Australian fans, um, and it's not just six of them. Uh, barracking him there's a there's a group of australian fans who are sort of they're, they're they're chanting shiraz at him um because i don't know siraj and shiraz sound sort of similar uh shout welcome to sydney mate um uh, obviously very gleeful at that point that australia uh look like they're ahead of the game well, it's just not very is that not very nice of them uh inviting the their opposite number to their their city is that not what they were doing no it's not um and and if you the, i mean the audio for the for the incident isn't crystal clear so like um go and listen to it make up your own mind i i think probably what's been reported is correct um but i i i think the point ross you introduced it and you said it, it's 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 like a, a nice related group of people i would probably disagree with that in australia i'm afraid to say um because it isn't the first time it wasn't the first time in the test um when when, when this was when the, when they stopped the game on the on the fourth day after siraj reported it um and i i think it's it's a serious problem that Australia has, and and of course more broadly the world. It's not isolated to Australia. Um, I I I think we can talk a little bit about the culture, um, and and I've, I 
I, I, I think we will talk, and I think we should talk a little bit about the culture that, that sort of has led to this moment. Um, but I am aware that I've sort of spoken and, and, and given my views on it for sort of two or three minutes on the bounce now, and, and, and I, I've got some other bits, points that I do want to make. Um, but, but like what, I mean, I don't know, have you seen this video, anyone? Uh, how, how much of this incident have you, uh, have you, have you caught? I haven't actually seen any of it, um, but exactly what you say about Australia. Australia's got a big problem with race. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Uh, I mean, I've got um, and uh, I went there with a mate of mine, and I didn't even realise it. This is a long time ago, and um, he's English, black, and I didn't even think about it. booked holiday in Perth, and we went out there. And after three days, he said, "I don't like it here. Um, they're racist." And this is just casual racism everywhere. Um, you know, they've got a history of it. They're very isolated down there. I mean, you look at their immigration policy, so I get all political <laughs> on it. But um, yeah, they're not very nice when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, and it doesn't surprise me at all. And I think it should be brought out. But it's not, you know, Joffre had the same problem in New Zealand last year. Uh, it, it goes on everywhere. And I'm sure actually some of the English guys probably get it the other way around when you go to somewhere like India. You know, some of the fans will... Uh, say derogatory things racially minded like that there are stupid people everywhere in the world but you kind of have to take it out of the <laughs> if you find it you have to take it around i mean football in this country has had a terrible problem definitely yeah sort of, i think i think it's know, the casual know. nature of it in particular that yeah. is so um disgraceful mm. in, in 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 this case and and i think and i i i i've read a lot into this and and um and uh, there are a couple of good documentaries, but I think I think this is a, this is a, probably a problem more broadly with Australian sport. If you're if you are interested in this, then there are a couple of really good documentaries um, about uh, this problem in Australia specifically. So they're, they're called The Last Quarter and The Australian Dream, and they tell uh, the same story. So they are they are quite similar. You probably don't have to watch them both. Maybe watch one of them. Um, and it's a, they they tell the story of an, an Aussie rules footballer called Adam Goods, um, whose mother is Indigenous Australian, uh, and basically uh, during so they have an Indigenous week in the or an Indigenous round in the in the AFL. So during that week, he's playing against Collingwood, which I think is a Melbourne club uh, for the Sydney Swans. So he's playing away, uh, and he's by the crowd, and a thirteen-year-old girl calls him an ape, um, and he reports it and he ah oh, he says i think probably fairly i want that person ejected and and the 13 year old girl is ejected uh, is ejected uh, and the consequences of that basically aren't that australia has a, a a look at the circumstances around their the sporting environment that that led to that incident happening what happens is that there's a sustained booing campaign against adam goods for 2 years and and eventually adam goods says fuck it i've had enough of this he retires he doesn't uh, at the end of the Aussie Rules football season at the grand final, all the retiring players uh, paraded on the pitch to say sort of farewell. He says, fuck you, I'm not going to that. Um, and uh, I've used the F word a couple of times. There. Adam Goods is a, is a much better spokesman on, <laughs> on this issue than, than I am. Uh, you'll be stunned to hear. Uh, and he speaks very eloquently about it. And the, and the two films, they basically sport, uh, explore what it was like for him to go through this. Uh, um, and... And the mental gymnastics that the, the the people booing him go through to justify to them accept to themselves why it's acceptable to to boo someone for basically reporting um, racist r- abuse at, at the end of the day. Yeah, well, I can't. And, be, and I can't want... think we can be surprised anymore about the level of mental gymnastics people will go through to affirm well, their own views. Sure, sure. And, and and if you want a demonstration of this problem, and and I I've me- I've mentioned the video where you can you can you, or the video of this Siraj incident, and you, you can go onto Cricket Reddit. Uh, or you can find the tweet with this video in, and you can look at what the Australian fans are saying, and and and, and count how many times friendly banter or I didn't hear it or or whatever is put up there. Um, I, I I I I think there's a there's 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 a I mean a huge problem. There. There's a big I think it's an ambivalence as well that extends um, further to probably to the heart of, of of cricket Australia. I mean, why are the Australian team not kneeling? Uh, why do they decide not to do that? Uh, we, I think, we flagged it uh, at least on Twitter at the time mm. um, that it that it was odd, and they basically mm. said we didn't have a discussion about it. And it's like, why are you not having that discussion? Mm. I mean, if if the Australian team demonstrate that it, it, it is they they do not think it's acceptable to racially abuse people by kneeling, then you cr- you start to create an environment where people at least have to question um, their 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 
uh, impulse to do, to do it in the first place, and you begin that kind of education process. You're, you're the, the reason it happened yesterday, uh, or, or, or on day four, um, it's those people, those six blokes, didn't turn up at the test thinking, hey, we're going to racially abuse an Indian. But they through the course of the day and probably after drinking a lot of alcohol and probably getting a gleeful that Australia were on top, they felt that it was okay to do that. They felt that they were in an environment where that was an acceptable thing to do. And, and that really is the systemic fucking problem. Like mm -hmm. that you, you, nobody, they, that they think that that's a safe space to do that. And, and, um, and it's not a policing issue either. I mean, like people will, this investigation is going to go one way or the other and, and, and they might find some, that, that they might find proof. They might not, uh, I, I'm inclined to back the player. I don't see why they stopped the game and, and ran report it if if it didn't happen. Um, but it's not. It's not. Whatever the outcome of that is, it's not about the investigation. It's it's about the fact that in the first place that it was allowed to happen. That it, that, mm. that people thought it was okay to go and do that. And it's it's a it's a thing in Australian um, sport. Uh, I'm afraid, and and it's a thing in sport. I mean, uh, bear as you say, I'm, I don't I don't want to to sound all high and mighty, and I'm very aware with four white blokes talking about it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> but um, you, you, I, look look at football. Look at look at the Millwall fans oh, yeah. booing booing their oh, own God, team. For yeah. it's 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 a it's a fucking problem. It's a fucking pox. Um, and even more of a problem with that is that. In reaction, they said, "Okay, we're not going to kneel. We'll raise a fist or whatever." But we and it's just like you know, you, you cow to it, and it it gives them more of a reason to think that that's yeah. the right thing to do. And that's again what you're saying. The you know, there's a a cultural issue. I mean, the final point I'd say as well, and and and, and there will I imagine be people listening to this and thinking to themselves, "Jack, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> this this was just friendly banter, or or Siraj just misinterpreted." Uh, or, or just doesn't isn't aware he's inexperienced in the in the in the arena of international sport he doesn't know this happens um <clears throat> Siraj has played in the IPL Siraj has played in front of a crowd it's not it's something must have happened here and and if you're justifying this as, as banter then you are part of the problem you need to educate <laughs> yourself um <laughs> He did exactly. Absolutely. He did exactly the right thing as well, didn't he? He did yeah, exactly 100%. the right thing. Straight, talk to his teammates. Talk to the umpires. I thought the umpires handled it really well. And actually, the, the dealing with that issue was done very well on the day. But though, as you said, the environment is the issue. Um, so the cricket podcast clearly condemns this fucking shit. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no other way around it. We've sworn more of this podcast than any other podcast. But um, I thought Tendulkar. So obviously, after all the all of this, you know, people who going to tweet about it and talk about it and um, Sachin Tendulkar who some of the Indian fans might be a fan of actually summed it up quite well I thought um, so I was just going to read out kind of what he said he said um, sport is meant to unite us not divide us cricket never discriminates the bat and ball recognises talent of the person holding them not race colour religion or nationality those who don't understand this have no place in the sporting arena which I think is a perfect way to end this segment if I'm perfectly honest yeah um, we we Said we would do. Uh, the, the listeners don't know this. We said we'd do a cricket sandwich. So we we've got the 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 we we wanted to we obviously wanted to cover that incident, but we also want to talk about the cricket. So we'll we'll wrap up the India Australia segment of our show by talking about the fourth test briefly. Should we do that, boys? Yes. Um, lots of people nodding. Okay. Lots of people nodding at me. <laughs> <laughs> on an audio yeah. format yeah. Yeah. for the benefit um, so, of the listener. Well, it's a heavy, heavy segment, right? A heavy segment. Yeah, well, no, sure, <laughs> sure. Um, but it does, in, in cricketing terms, uh, the the outcome of the third test is that uh, Australia v India will go to test four um, with test four set up as a decider. So pro probably the first v, well, one v two in the world of test cricket are going to take each other on at the Gabba, um, or as England fans will know it, the Gabba <laughs> Uh <laughs> Australia, I mean, the odds are probably against India here. Uh, Australia have won their last seven matches at the Gabba, um, and in fact haven't lost there for 32 years, going back to 1988. Um, do you know which team beat them that year, boys? England? No. West Indies? It's West Indies, yeah, of course it is. It's, it's the eighties. Um, currently, Ambrose was was man of the match. Um, fun fact: I'd look at the score score scorecard quickly. Uh, he bowled forty overs in the match. Uh, Twenty two no balls. <laughs> nice. Probably yeah, more these days. Well. <laughs> a few more, a few wickets on no balls. 
Um, so uh, India, unfortunately, are going to go into this test further depleted. So, I mean, who's out at the moment? Off the top of my head, I can think of uh, Kohli, Shami, Yadav, uh, Sharma, uh, Vihari, uh, Jadeja. Uh, Kumar. Uh, who, sorry? Bhuva Weshru Karma. Uh, yeah, Kuma? Kuma. yeah, yeah, Kuma, yeah, B- 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 uh, and KL Rahul. So that's eight players who would probably be pretty, pretty handy, eight players as well, um, won't be around. Um, we have said before every test that uh, we expect Australia to win the next test. And uh, India have defied us in the, in the last couple. Will it, be, um, will it be third time lucky for us, Ross? Uh, well, uh, behind door number one, you have an Australia win. <laughs> behind door number two, you have an Australia win. Uh, I, th- it's going to be uh, again. What do they say? How they how they bounce back from this? I think it's they almost take it as a bit of a defeat. India end up kind of batting really well the whole game. Um, I think it'll be quite difficult for them to get back up and play. Um, but unfortunately, I just think the injuries are going to play too much of a part in this. There's only so many great performances your batsman can put on. Um, and again, we've seen the seen what they seen what they can do. Um, I just can't see Cumdog, Hazelwood, Stark and Lyon not being able to do this, but I might be wrong. Might be wrong. Max? I'll go I'll go along with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, if they had Yadav and Umesh and a, and a proper bowling unit, because, I mean, they, they you know, apart from that 36 disastrous runs that cost them the first test, you know, they've actually been very competitive throughout it. But, I mean, without... A, a first string bowling unit in Australia, you're struggling. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, Jasper Boomerang is amazing, but he can't do it all on his own. Uh, spinner's been okay, but then you've lost your danger. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, have they got another spinning option? In? I don't even know who's left in the squad. Have they got any leggies in there? Have they got, did they, Chawal oh, did they or take Chawal? Chawal? Or? Chawal? I don't think, I don't even think, I don't think they'll go with that. I think they'll, um, They'll ask Rahul Dravid to come out of the commentary box well, and get, I mean, get one of his pads off. Probably doing some good still. He probably could still bloody knock up a ton, couldn't he? It's actually hard to say. Um, I, I think if they bring in a bowler, it'll be another quick. And I think they'll try and fight fire with fire to, to some extent at the Gabba. Uh, I, or, I mean, that, or, or that's what I would do. Uh, I mean, it's, Well, that's what I would do, but they're all youngsters, aren't they? And they're all really inexperienced and you're going into the final test of a series. I mean, batting's as much of an yeah, there is, I mean, I, that, there is a batting issue. Isn't I heard it. The Australians were talking about bringing Rhythm and Saha in to keep and having Pant as a batsman yesterday. I, I think that is... I think, they're so depleted. I think that's what they'll do Yeah, um, as well. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I mean, there's, there's a couple of questions we're not really 100% sure on. Um, Vahari, he pulled a hamstring or tore mm-hmm. a hamstring. Yeah. Uh, I, there might be a really quick turnaround on him to get back in and, and, and you'd think they'd pick him if there was any hope that he could make it through the test match. Um, but yeah, I mean the stocks stocks are are running low for um, for India. I well, pos- I can't. Well, the other what well, I was going to say the other option. I suppose you've got Mayank Agarwal who's been dropped. I mean he's not injured, is he? No, he's, I mean, he, he was, was, he, was, he, was, was he was dropped for Sh- uh, Sharma. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh. I'm pretty sure. What is that? But, but you know, someone like Agarwal might you know might. They could stick him in further down the order where he's not going to face the new ball. Well, I think, I think that they might have a chance there. There was some chat that Rohit Sharma would be the one to drop down to five and uh, they would they would play Agarwal or maybe even um, move Pajara up to open. But I don't... I mean, I think Rohit and, and Shubman Gill opening the batting is not... And, and then Pajara at three is not where the issues are going to be for, for India in... Um, in this in this test, I I think there's well I mean obviously they're going to have a, a pretty weak lower middle order, um, even with a, a resurgent pant in there, and I I think the um, the other big problem for for India is that their bottom three are, are genuinely shit. Um, and not in a not in a like not even in like a Jack Leach quite bad at batting. They they um, I think two of them average two. With the yeah. with the bat in first class cricket, um, so uh, they've got. I think their combined average was six. In and they're, they're in their first and second tests as well, aren't they? Yeah, so they're <laughs> they're 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 really weak there. And Jadeja, um, uh, by basically being uh, another batter who who obviously can also bowl reasonably handily <laughs> and, and field, gave, field rather well. Yeah, gave them a, yeah. gave them an awful lot of protection there, and um, I. I, I think it's good. it could be a fairly brittle lineup. 
um, for for India. So I I am gonna I'm gonna say Australia again. Although I would I would I, I, not to go full Kevin Keegan, but I would fucking love it if um, Ravi Ashwin, <laughs> if Ravi Ashwin went there and um, and got a fiver. <laughs> I, I will say this, and you pointed out earlier that in this test match that um, uh, Lavi Shane and Smith, and Smith got his first runs of the series in this. And uh, the one thing I want to say is uh, we were talking about this, I think, in the last Ashes series or, you know, when when Smith, in, you know, never gets out against England. We talked about this kind of leg side bowling straight theory at him and it didn't come off this test, but it's come off in the previous two. Mm-hmm. And the guy is so good and he gets so far across his stumps um, that they've come up with a plan that we kind of talked about a little bit, whereas you kind of bowl straight and you have those three men. You have one guy behind short on a 45 or down there. You have a guy at backward square, maybe you have a short uh, short leg, and you have a guy in a, a shortish mid wicket. And you play to his strength, but you stop him from scoring runs. And it's kind of worked. And if, if they can get those two out, and it's a big if with not the bowling tack they want, but if you can cut those two off, Warner's scored nothing. You know, I mean, uh, Pukovic or whatever his name Pukowski. is scored some runs. Yeah, yeah Pukowski, that's it. He scored some runs. But the rest of them haven't really scored any runs, you know. Mm-hmm. This is why they're in a position they're in. If you can get those two, and if you can get them in the first innings as well and put some pressure on, you never know what might happen. Although I'm still going to go Australia. Yeah, I guess. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> see what happens. And I'm sure we'll um, we'll have a good chat about that on um, on next week's podcast. Uh, we, we've done a lot of India on this episode, which will, which will please our fans, no doubt, <laughs> or a good portion of our fans. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll, we, we will be moving on to England's um, tour of Sri Lanka. To see the way my old man's painted <laughs> and my mum, it's, it hurts. Got it! Uh, and I can't remember what else. Right. Well, we all, uh, all taken a breath there after that, uh, <laughs> that that segment on um, on India and I think we it's fair to say we covered that fairly thoroughly. Um, we'll we'll move move from come, India. Come on, India! I think if it, if it wasn't obvious, <laughs> move uh, moving from India, just a, a, a short hop over to a, a little island uh, called Sri Lanka, where England will be playing two tests and three ODIs in the next few weeks. With the first test starting on Thursday, the fourteenth at four thirty a.m. UK time for. Uh, for those who want to tune in, we'll be doing it live. <laughs> Good luck. Ross Good luck to you. <laughs> um, uh, we mentioned last week England uh, arrived in Sri Lanka and were instantly dealt a blow uh, with Moeen Ali testing positive for COVID 19 on arrival and therefore going into isolation uh, for 10 days and hence being unavailable for the first test. Uh, Chris Wokes was also self-isolating uh, in his hotel room for seven days because he was deemed a, a co- close contact despite having tested negative subsequently. Um, so he remains a doubt as well. Uh, with, with that in mind, uh, England's prep for this one hasn't been ideal. Uh, we're a, a frontline bowler down uh, and also the, the two-day intra-squad match that, uh, that we had was cut. 50% short by some rain. Uh, so not a lot of cricket that's gone uh, gone on and uh, I did, some personnel I did, issues. I did also enjoy the Sri Lankan shithousery of preparing an absolute green top for us to bat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, it, if it seems it spins, so they say, Ross. <laughs> don't get don't uh, don't get too lulled into a full sense of security by the by the greenness. You wouldn't be the first <laughs> one to fall to that fall for that trick. Um, but I, I suppose the the qu- first question I wanted to to ask. Um, is is around that preparation. So, uh, I mean, people, especially in Test cricket and especially England as well, to a, to a degree, uh, sort of organisations get uh, pilloried a bit for not preparing enough, um, not having enough warm up games, and uh, and and that sort of thing. Obviously, <laughs> not blaming anyone in this case because uh, there's not a lot you can do. But uh, are England going to be caught a bit short here? Do you think? I'll go. Yeah, of course they will. <laughs> but. Uh... <laughs> It's a funny one, isn't it? I mean, we thought I mean, they were underprepared last time they went and went away and won 3 0, um, which was a surprise to all of us. I mean, Keaton Jennings got a ton for crying out loud. I mean, <laughs> Unbeaten. Things were, things were, yeah, exactly. Things were very weird. Um, but you look at the squad and you look at what's happened and you kind of think that's a possibility. Uh, but <laughs> Sri Lanka aren't, a, aren't the team they used to be. I mean, they've got some handy guys at Chandamal and, and uh, some guys at the top who are good and they'll have some half decent spinners. Um, 
but I thought we our spinners equal them. I mean, if the track spins, um, there's a possibility. We've got a left and a right armour. Uh, Leach is good. Bess is okay. Not a particular fan of him. I'd prefer to have to mow in, in the side. Uh, we've got a we've got a fair few. Uh, all, I mean, I would probably, I, I'd imagine they're going to go for Sam Curran um, in the middle order somewhere, lower middle order, six, seven or eight. Oh, I think so. Um, because he offers you somewhere to bat. Uh, he's got a lot of variations having played IPL and these wickets are going to kind of suit that kind of thing. The, the seam bowlers aren't going to bowl a lot. Let's be honest. I mean, last time we were there, literally you had two overs of seam followed by the rest of the game was just, you know, yeah. rotating spinners, which actually makes it quite fun to watch because uh, wickets come fairly, you know, regularly. Um, and I'd imagine that they'll, after a short while, they'll kind of attack because it's, it's almost the best form of defence when you don't know what the ball's going to do. <laughs> Plus, our batting lineup looks like it may, may well have Bearster at number three, <laughs> which is troublesome. Yeah, well, so if, if, the there isn't, if there isn't a fast bowler to uh, bowl at the stumps, he might be okay. <laughs> well, that's true. But now he'll get an inside edge because his bat's never straight. So, Well, well, well let's, let's start talking about Bearstow then. I mean, he is the most intense man in cricket. Um, he's now considered the first, third choice wicketkeeper behind Butler and Folks. Um, and he's kind of managed to cling on for dear life in this England side, isn't he, really? Um, but as you say, with Ben Stokes out of the picture, he's either going to bat at three or bat at five. And I think Dan Lawrence or Ben Folks might do the other one. Um, he's been based on his... Uh, his selection has been based on his batting record in Asia and he's played a staggering one game in Sri Lanka. Um, <laughs> did he did right. hit a century in it. Yeah. He did hit a century in it. So it's a pretty good record. Um, and more impressively, he averages over 40 in India. So he, he can bat in the subcontinent, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, but as you say, Bear, I mean, if he's a little bit worrisome. I, I'm, I'm surprised... Well, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm still surprised he's got another shot at Test cricket. How many chances does this guy have? I, th- I think it's interesting with Bearstow, isn't it? Um, I think you can divide Bearstow's Test career into pre-white ball transformation and post-white ball transformation. Um, before what about 2017, uh, he was a good all-format player. Um, and then he made a change to his technique, which opened him up a little bit. Uh, and gave him a few more scoring options in white ball cricket uh, to the detriment of his red ball game. And now, I mean, I, I mean, you have to say that the first of all, probably a good decision from Bairstow. He is now <laughs> maybe the best white ball opener in in world cricket. Uh, he's won a World Cup. Uh, he's going to have a really good chance at winning the T20 World Cup later this year. Uh, he, he, he's got a good chance at taking down an IPL or two. Uh, he'll certainly pick up some big old contracts uh, in that <laughs> tournament as he as he moves through his career so um for for in terms of his cricketing accomplishments and and his bank balance uh that's he's done very well um the 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 obvious downside is that that from about uh, what is it 2017 that he, he started he made this change he is um he gets bowled too easily in test cricket uh, and it's a very easy plan for people to um <laughs> Bowl too, and 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 to some extent, I, I I think his record in Asia may be slightly influenced by um, the fact that he hadn't made that transformation when when he last went there. Um, you know, Ross and I went on a on another show uh, yesterday, and we, we were talking about this. And 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 the thing with Bearstow is that. He is Bearstow's biggest fan, and he is absolutely convinced <laughs> that, that that Bearstow can can pull off this change or, or can pull off Test cricket. So it's not going to be a confidence issue issue, and it won't be a mental issue. That's all there. And England love somebody who who believes in it, in, in himself. Um, so I expect him to get a few chances. Um, to me, really, my my issue with 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 this decision is is the short termist approach. Um, uh, I think it may well work in Sri Lanka because uh, Sri Lanka aren't very good. Uh, I think it could work in India because he appears to have a technique that works there. He's played a lot of IPL, knows the conditions reasonably well. Um, I, th- I think Bumrah will be looking, licking his lips a little <laughs> bit, but um, you know, you never know, do you? Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily see it being a success in back in England. Um, or in Australia next year. Uh, no. So, so I'd, I'd, I'd maybe like a slightly more progressive pick and um, and, and Dan Lawrence. Yeah, I've, I've, I think that's uh, that's fair. And I, I suppose um, it's worth looking. I guess we'll, we'll move from from 
best though to uh, England in more in general in terms of uh, well the squad like we mentioned isn't uh, as strong as it would be and uh, along with that what England sort of need to do to uh, actually win the series so uh, we obviously know spin is all important in Sri Lanka that that much is evident um, you don't need to know a lot about cricket to to come to that <laughs> conclusion and um, on England's last visit to Sri Lanka in 2018, they, they won. It was a 3-0 whitewash. Uh, so it's probably worth looking at what happened there to get a little indication of what might need to happen this time. Um, starting with the obvious, the spin. Um, Moeen Ali, Jack Leach and Adil Rashid all played all three tests and took 48 wickets between them um of the rest stokes took five and he's not there um presumably with you know his uh workhorse approach that we've mentioned in the past root took one of the others and then anderson and curran both took one uh so to to turn that into the how many um, overs did the stokes if you take out stokes how many um, how many overs did curran and anderson well in fact keep stokes in it and stokes bowl uh, it was it was hardly any. I think we're, 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 we're talking like very. Curran didn't bowl in one test. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, what's your question here, Max? Well, so uh, yeah. So I mean, the the question I have really is, um, well, but we're missing Ali, obviously, and uh, in terms of the actual the main squad, we're looking at, at Bess and Leach. Um, so what what are we, what can England do um, to make up for the fact that they are a spinner down and yeah, probably probably looking at a situation where they may have, um, especially without Ben Stokes, may have Joe Root and Dom Sibley bowling some pies to make up the time. Well, <laughs> also, oh, God, Bear. what I was going to say, that's exactly it, isn't it? Root will probably bowl himself for a few. Sibley might have a go. Uh, I mean, I think this is where Curran will come in because he bowls those cutters and he's got all these little weird variations. He slows his pace down a t- and they'll probably give him a few. That's why I think he'll be in the side. <laughs> Jimmy Anderson will get about three overs with a new ball if he's lucky and bat a yeah. number 11, you know. It's, yeah. And then Broad will get the next test and then they might well switch. And... and um, if Wokes is back, they might well play Wokes and leave those two just chill them on the sidelines because you want people who can bat as well. You might as well bat as deep as you like. Your spinners are going to bowl as much as yeah. they're going to anyway. Um, you need to bat deep. And I think that's where we did it last time, really. We just batted a little bit better. Yeah, I think um, Curran is definitely um, the budget version of Chiminda Vass. I think that's what they're probably going to go for. They just say, oh, left arm has worked here before. He took loads of wickets. <laughs> and Sam Curran, I genuinely believe, thinks that he's better than Chiminda Vass. So oh, he could work out. Yeah, he definitely thinks that. Um, I, I, I think there's a really um, illuminating interview that uh, Anderson and Broad did with Sky Sports earlier this week um, for people who, who have that subscription. Uh, where they they basically broke down the had the way England were going to manage the next six, six tests. So England, if you're not fully aware of the schedule, they play two against Sri Lanka, uh, then they play four back to back against India. Um, they they the two of them basically confirmed that no Sigma is going to play all six matches. I think we kind of knew that, um, but uh, interestingly, they gave a little bit of an insight into the thinking behind how England were. We're going to approach these matches, and um, the 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 they basically said they were going to flip round the roles that all uh, that the players have. So in England, Anderson, Broad, Wokes, open um, the bank. Are, <laughs> very good match. Um, are the bowlers you go to to take wickets? Where whilst you carry one spinner to kind of bowl a few overs to get you through to the new ball, maybe to do a bit on day five or day four, um, but largely. Uh, a spinner in England is there to kind of control the game, keep the economy suppressed. Um, they said that they view their role in Sri Lanka as um, somewhat similar to that. Uh, in other words, they'll 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 help rotate the spinners a little bit by bowling a few overs, probably back of a length, hopefully going for sort of two or three runs maximum per over, uh, whilst Leach and Beth are let off the leash to um <laughs> to to go and take some wickets I, I, and i i think that probably is the right approach i mean i guess i guess the question is and uh i'm sure we've all got views on this is is whether the, whether Bess and leach um have the the skills to support what seems to be a good strategy there well i'm a spinner i'm a left arm spinner bowl for years was reasonably good in my youth 
Uh, on those sorts of wickets, uh, and I go back to the test series when Monty Panasar won against India. Monty Panasar was a pretty solid spinner, didn't have a lot of variation. We could put it on a sixpence. Uh, and on wickets that turn, and these wickets will turn, uh, it's as much about just keeping the batsman there and keeping him honest and waiting for the mistake to come or the, or the ball that's going to bounce a little bit more, turn a little bit more, or the one that goes straight on, skids on, it doesn't actually hit the seam and all these kinds of things. All you've got to do is if you can get your flight right, your line and your length right, you just want to kind of keep it there and let the wicket do the work. And these wickets will do the work. Uh, and if they can do that and not leach too many runs, um, they will uh, they will take wickets. And I think they'll enjoy it. And a spinner should enjoy it in these conditions. Um Sri Lanka have got plenty of left ha- left arm left handers, sorry. So uh, Bess will have fun being a right armer. They've got some right, you know. It, it, it's important that you've got the variation. Uh, yeah, I think as a spinner, I and mean, I always enjoyed it being able to take it away from the batsman. And in club cricket, mostly people invariably were right-handed. Uh, not so much more in international cricket. You've got a lot of lefties now, uh, and so having both of those being able to take it away from the batsman, I think they'll have fun. And uh, uh, Moen's got experience out there. He'll help them out. Um, I'd quite like to see Nadal Rashid get another shot over there. I don't know what the situation was. He probably didn't want to go. His shoulder's knackered, isn't it? So, yeah, um, he decided not to. Um, and it's going to be a long Which I think it's a wise decision, if I'm perfectly honest. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it I, is I, a I wise think... decision. He's trying to prolong his career, isn't he? So. Well, I'd, I'd much rather have um, Adil Rashid playing in the T20 World Cup for us yeah. than <laughs> playing in some test matches that we're yeah. likely to uh, struggle Grinding with. his shoulder into the dirt against Rashid. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go on, sorry, Max. I was going to say, um, when it comes to the bowling unit, who do we think is going to be in there? Because they've picked Ollie Stone and Mark Wood. So they, that's, that's your pace kind of enforcers there. Yeah, as you just talked about, Don Bess and Leach are definitely going to play. Anderson or Broad might come in and out. Um, and then I think Chris Silverwood said yesterday that um, Verdi or one of the backup spinners like uh, Parkinson could well play if, if they think they need a third spinner. Um, so... Who do you think is going to be in there? Or well, sh- 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 to make this a little bit easier, someone asked on Twitter, "Can we just run through our, our um, expected 11s? Uh, so should we just do the full eleven each, and uh, and, th- and then we can get to the, the points of difference there? Uh, and sure. I, I, I don't mind starting if um, go for it. If if you don't mind permitting me, um, so I I, uh, I think we'll have Crawley opening the batting, um, and I think uh, Sibley, which which I mean that's a shocking. Um, Declaration from me there, isn't it? Mm. That they'll retain Sibley at the top of the order. Uh, Bairstow's going to come in at three, isn't he? Root will bat four. Uh, I think they'll go with Butler, five, with the gloves. Uh, Folks, six. Curran, seven. Uh, Bess, eight. Uh, Leach, Broad and Wood um, for the first test. Or Leach, Anderson and Wood for the first test. Um does anyone disagree with that? I I will say um, I will say one thing that's different in mind because that's what's different. I don't think folks will play because if you're putting folks in and not giving him the gloves, then what is the point? <laughs> I think that folks will keep the gloves because I think fucking Butler's useless out there, and I I, I you want your if you're going to bowl spinning most of the time, you want your best keeper against spin and folks is by far a better keeper than butler uh when it comes to that department but 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 just i think we need to address this in a second but just for on the bowlers point are we kind of agreed Um, no i wouldn't have i wouldn't have those i wouldn't have uh anderson wood and curran i would have wood i'd probably start with wood i think he's the fastest and if you're going to get anything you might as well go with him he's not no one's going to bowl a lot of overs i would have uh so where are we up to? So who did you have? Five, Lawrence, five. Uh, so I had uh, seven, seven um, Curran, and then down from there, Bess, uh, and then whoever, Leach, uh, Wood, and Anderson. Yeah, so I would, have, I would have your top seven, and I would have, I yeah. would have folks. So where did you have folks, sorry? Six or seven? Six. 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 Well, I'd probably have Curran at six, folks at seven, keeping. And then I'd have Leach, and I would have Bess, and then I'd have Wood. And I've got one more then. You have yeah, got you, you. You do get to play eleven players in cricket. Yeah. yeah. So uh... <laughs> I'll probably have another batsman then. No, so you can you double up with Lawrence, and then what? Then Root is used as your auxiliary spinner. Yeah, spinner. To, to get if I haven't got, if I haven't got uh, Moeen, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, th- I, th- I think you're all missing a trick. Dan Lawrence is definitely going to play. I think there's no point taking Dan <laughs> Lawrence on here if they're not going to play him. Is it's it? the perfect. It's the perfect opportunity to play a youth. And he's considered a youth player. He's also a really handy spin bowler, Dan Lawrence, which I think is being forgotten about by everyone on the podcast. Um, 
So let's not write him out. I don't think folks will play it, as I completely agree I with like, Max's what, point. What, yeah, what I, what I meant when I say um, that there's no point in playing folks if they don't give them the gloves is that I think, didn't they say that they were going to give Butler the gloves, in which case I, I'm i putting Lawrence in instead of folks. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the, the potential wrinkle in that plan is that they, I think they've said that folks will keep for the third and fourth test in India when um, Butler goes home for a rest. Just... Like, uh, so, well, why not get I, him ready by putting, making him keep every <laughs> test? I would have thought that means that that folks um, plays just for the experience of playing. Um, you can't, you can't play folks if he's not keeping. It's it's, it's well, just, no, I agree it should with Matt. be illegal. It's pointless. It's pointless <laughs> it's, you know, it's now you've got three yeah, keepers in the side. You've got it's Bears, not making and folks. Well, no, you've got one. You've got folks. Yeah, well, it's yeah. Not, <laughs> It's not us making the decision. I mean, I totally agree with you. And uh, on on the other show, Ross and I were on. We were talking about some stats, and I think it it hasn't folks taken two stumpings in ninety four. Um, no, it's innings. Butler. Yeah, That's Butler. Uh, Butler, Butler. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and whereas did, our, folks did two in three. Yeah, folks <laughs> averages a stumping every five matches in Test cricket, which is, or every five innings in Test cricket, which is the best of uh, was, any of these contemporaries. Um, folks got a ton so, out there as well last yeah. time. Didn't he, he? Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, there's, Average, there's look. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that folks would be the right call, but I don't think the England captain can give an interview that set where he says Butler will have the gloves and then they replace him uh, with, with folks, even though that's logical, even though they're basically doing exactly that with Bearstow. It's, it's the same logic. It's like that guy's good in Sri Lanka. Let's play him. Uh, well, that guy's also good at wicket keeping. Let's play him. Uh, but I, I, it, despite all of the, 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 the dumb arsery, um, that's gone into that statement. I, I still think it's within England's arsenal of decisions to pick folks as a pure batsman. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> should we uh, um, should we should we make this a two part episode and just go straight into Sri Lanka and then make? Some yeah. Well, I've, I've got. I was going to say I've got one one more quick thing to to mention on England, which is sort of uh, reasonably closely related to the discussion we've been having about folks and Butler, uh, which is the uh, the second part of what England did well to win in Sri Lanka, uh, complementing the spin bowling, was the fielding slash wicket keeping. Um, folks with eight catches and two stumpings, but also notably Ben Stokes in his uh, position as the slip fielder for the for the spinners, which he takes up uh, in uh, with a plum, um, took uh, nine catches. And Keaton Jennings, who would have been a short leg at the time, with eight catches. What do England do? about the fact that they don't have either of those players and Ollie Pope is in the reserve squad, as we've seen. We we know how good he is at short leg. He's, he's done it before. What do England well, do? Well, you put folks at first slip. I'm sure he'll be pretty good there. Um... <laughs> Uh, I think I think Bear's about to shout at me, but um, I think that Keaton Jennings was actually really hard done by for not being picked for this tour. I think if you're going to go with the logic of picking Bearstow based upon his record in India, they should have picked Keaton Jennings because Rory Burns was out. Wow. <laughs> Horses for courses, I can kind of see that, but Jennings is just shit. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, you can't, you know, he was lucky to get on a tour. Last. I mean, let's face it, he, he scored runs. I mean, I can imagine Crawley will, might will have a similar um, approach. You know, he had very long legs and he swept everything. Yep. And I think England's approach will be, I think their batting approach, they'll look at it very similar to what they did last time. Is that you've got to kind of be proactive, otherwise you can get stuck. Uh, and that's why I don't think many of these tests will go to the fifth day. I think most of them will be over on the fourth day, early on the fourth day or late on the third. I, you know, Sri Lanka aren't a great side. And if the pitches are similar to last time, both sides will struggle. And it's a question of how quickly you can get the runs there. And I do think mm-hmm. actually England have got the batting to get quick runs. They might not last very long, um, but you might well get 30s, 40s and 50s out of a, a fair few in the middle order and a couple will stick around and you end up with a score of about 300, which will be competitive. Um and it will go like that. So I think Crawley will, can do that job. There's a fair few good sweepers. I mean, I, back to folks being a keeper, you quite happily have Butler in on these sorts of uh, tracks as a batsman. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's not. It's not. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going <laughs> to yeah. happen. Stop seeing the fantasy. Uh, that, so uh, perennial forward in the side, Angelo Matthews is back in. I think he's about 57 now, so he's probably going to hit a few runs against England. He, he is. Uh, Sri Lanka have got like they've they've. Um, I mean, Sri Lanka aren't very good, but we'll, 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 we'll mention Matthews in a second. But if we if we just introduce the Sri Lanka team, because they are they 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 currently stand at sixth in the ICC rankings, which is approximately four places above where yeah. I think they should be. So that's that's um, their first team as well, which they definitely yeah. don't have at the moment. 
Um, I they're, they're not helped by injuries, as you say. Um, where where to start here? Uh, <laughs> what they what they basically confirmed. Um, this is their whole game plan. Uh, is the the Karuna Ratner has gone to the groundsman at Gaul and said, "Can you make this ter- pitch turn as much as fucking possible?" <laughs> uh, which will shock no one. Um, Ross, why don't you tell us why Angelo Matthews will make that plan work? Because I, 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 I actually can't see it working at all. No, I, it's just one of those bits where I think they've got three main spinners, right, in terms of um, Sri Lanka. So they've got um, Hasaranga, the mystery spinner, who doesn't really turn it that much um, from what we've seen before. Well, that is um, that is that spells absolute disaster, doesn't it, for the yeah. England lineup? <laughs> it, it absolutely does. I mean, I've, I've got Roston Chase of West Indies written down here. Um, and I mean, if, if he's anything to go by, if a spinner doesn't spin it, we're in for a bit of trouble. But Rory Burns isn't playing this this tour so because he's uh, having a baby, so congratulations to him. Um, they've also got finger spinners, I think a bit like England, where they've got a right-hander and a left-hander in Pereira and M. Baldenia. Yeah. So um, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see that approach. I think batting-wise, they've got Chandable, who I think hit, hit a couple of runs. Um in against uh, South Africa, or is this coming back from injury? Um, yeah, and Karina Ratner, yeah, Karina Ratner hit a century against them, so they can bat. And Angela Matthews just loves batting against England. I think there is just that perennial bit of let's try and force something here. Um, I get the impression he absolutely hates England. There's I always know, some I, spice, isn't there, with Angelo Matthews? I love Angelo Matthews. I've got to say, I've got a real soft spot for Angelo Matthews. <laughs> He's got a lot of soft spot, actually. Yeah, <laughs> well, he has. But uh, I, you know, he, he's a you know he uh, he'll stand up and be counted. You know, Ross, I, uh, insert fat joke here. Leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the um, the main problem with I mean, Ross, you've run through the spinners there. Uh, House Ranga averages fifty four, um, which is great. Only two tests, both in, in in South Africa, and he he kind of bowled okay. Um, but uh, there's an awful lot of threat from from, from the legs. Well, in that case, uh, he's, he's, in that case he's six he's for taking, twenty. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, per, per, Pereira and uh, Embul Denia uh, both averaged nearly forty. Well, Pereira was um, the top wicket taker in the 2018 series, despite yeah, that South might, might be South might be, losing three 0 That's that's all well and good, but none of that really says good spinner. And, and when you're playing a lot of Test matches. What you're forgetting, Jack, uh, is you like don't a... need to be that good a spinner when you're bowling exactly. against England. And not only that, when the pitches are helpful, and they bowl at home. They, I mean, we did beat them last time, but this is my this is my point. This is what I was saying to you earlier. If the pitch is doing the work, you don't have to be a big turn of the ball or any of this stuff. You've got to be able to keep the batsman in their place and, and, and hope for one that misbehaves a little bit irregularly and hopefully creates that chance. I mean, like looking purely at their statistics, it doesn't really look like any of them are capable of doing that. What's Don Bess's average? Well, I feel like what we've got here is I, I'm definitely part of the new guard when it comes to England fan. I think England are going to absolutely hump Sri Lanka, <laughs> whilst Max and Bear here are sitting there. Old England, do you think we're going to cock it up? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, 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 I think you're, you're, no, 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 no. I think we've got yeah, a good <laughs> chance. But the point is, we don't have our strongest team. I mean, I look at the, the batting lineup, and I, you know, I was reading the match report the other day, and in fact, I was emailing George the Bell going, "Why isn't Ollie Pope in the fucking match squad on ESPN? Because he just scored forty or fifty or yeah, whatever." I think he's coming back from injury. I think. Yeah, I think well, apparently the... that's what someone told me after I. You he's, know, he's still better well, injured than, than most of our players well, exactly you know you want him in there and the Stokes is a massive miss let's face it you know yeah, um, yeah I mean I, I just can't look at the South uh, Sri Lanka side uh, if England do not win 2-0 um, serious questions need to be asked yeah Bear I just need to reassure you that John Embry and Jamie Dalrymple aren't coming out of the closet for England <laughs> yeah. to come and play like, we've got some pretty good players now yeah I, think, yeah, I, think yeah, we'll I know right. I know I know I mean yeah. <laughs> Karen Arat and Pereira are all right. I mean, is it Dilshan de Silva? One of them got injured in the South Africa. Uh, yeah, um, da, uh, Dan and Jaya. Dan and Jaya. Dan and Jaya. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. he's a good bat. Um, he's not. He's not going to be playing though. He's not going to um, be playing. No, it's a shame. But I mean, they've got a couple of decent bats in the top five. They've got Andre Matthews, who was last good in 2016. Unless he's um, playing England, of course. Yeah. In which case, he'll <laughs> be fantastic. Chandamal coming back from injury. Uh, Kusal Pereira, who has played one astonishing innings and <laughs> quite a lot of not very good ones. Um, and Karuna Ratna, who's a drunk driver. That's so, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, don't, don't get it. me wrong. England England should be winning this series and they should be winning it comfortably. I, don't, but I, don't, I don't even just think, think, you know, you're, you're being a little blasé about the, I'm not the being blasé. some they're, of Sri Lanka's bowlers of taking wickets. They're three spinners who get to bowl. They're three spinners who get to bowl in Sri Lanka, where we're all talking up spinners, are all garbage. 
Well, you just it's said not... one of them's only played two tests, and both of those weren't in Sri Lanka. So no, what, yeah, what, but what, he, yeah. he has played first class cricket, and he's not exactly lit that up. He's not oh, a guy okay. swaggered around with an average of twenty in Sri Lanka first class cricket, which I don't think is a great standard because some of the other the, uh, some of the other guys. Uh, I've looked through the whole. I mean, I mean, one of the interesting things about Sri Lanka is that we have no idea who they're going to play because they've named a squad which includes people who they have ruled out. Um, <laughs> so, so it is. It's a little bit like um, we're, we're a blind man shuffling around in the dark, um, trying to, to bring you actual, actual analysis here. But there, there's huge run differentials between what uh, these spinners are capable of in the Sri Lankan first class system and what they're producing in international cricket. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I really, I mean, it, it's... it's in, England aren't great against spin, and England are prone to the occasional brain fade. But um, I think you'd have to bat twice badly to lose to Sri Lanka. And then you probably have to bowl twice badly as well. This is England, um, what are you on about? Yeah. <laughs> you probably, <laughs> it sounds England, plausible to me. England probably only need to perform to their potential in one of four innings across a test match to, to put the Sri Lanka team away. Uh, mm-hmm. Which isn't... Which isn't too hard, I, I, I don't think. And um, okay. one of the rogue things I think could happen. Uh, there's, there's two things. Uh, that's it, and I'm done on Sri Lanka. Um, if you're watching, watch out for Dick Weller. Lots of people say he is the best wicket wicketkeeper in the world. Um, so if you're if you're a glove man, looking at you, Max. Um, yeah, but you got you got to love his appeals as well. He does the yeah dancing crab as he goes across. Uh, so, takes, uh, are Sri Lanka not playing him as a specialist batsman then, and giving the gloves to no, someone else? No. <laughs> um, take some notes. Um, and they have they have actually got a spinner who averages below thirty. Um, Akila Dananjaya. He's been out for I think a year. we um, doing oh, some dodgy rem- action. Doing some remedial work on yeah. his action, but he has been cleared by the ICC. Um, and bearing in mind that Sri Lanka's squad is. Uh, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not sure it's the actual squad that, that, that <laughs> they will use. Um, uh, I, I think we might end up, or well, I think there's the possibility that we'll see a rogue selection uh, yeah. and he'll come in. Uh, anyway, um, that's England v Sri Lanka. Really quick predictions, then Ross has got some cricket news, then we'll wrap up this bumper show. Um, Scoreline, Ross. 2-0 England. Joe Root will be uh, the leading run scorer and Jack Leach will be the leading wicket taker. Great. Max? Yeah, two 0 England. Um, I, 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 yeah, that's that's <laughs> unbelievable. What do you mean six, unbelievable? Seven, I told six, you, six, I told you that we should win. I'm just saying that you need to, uh, you know, play a little bit more respect. You just need to hedge your bets massively. Eng- yeah. England will win, and um, uh, Hasaranga will be the top wicket taker for the series. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm, I'm you... with Matt having put it down 2-0 to England obviously but um, <laughs> you know with caveats uh, <laughs> yeah Root will probably be top scorer um, I don't know he'll be top wicket taker I think they'll share him around yeah, yeah I, I, um... I just I do just want to make it clear to Max and Bear here that it's okay to be wrong. Like it's, it, we're not we're not we don't, we don't have to lie. Or oh, no, I, do think, I, I, I think we're, we're I think we're a better side. Don't get me wrong, and I, you know we're weak <laughs> and everything. But yeah, as you say, Sri Lanka are poor. Um, 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 me and Ross are on like a streak of being wrong about Australia v India. So it's not, not people, we've, we've got more listeners than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, right, Jack and Jack, are you? Uh, you are it's going to be it's going to be two nil. Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, anyone could score all the runs, couldn't they? Oh, that, that's great for a cricket but show. Johnny no, Bairstow could win. I tell you what, Johnny Bairstow's going to score. I actually think there's a chance Johnny Bairstow might. Uh, notch a couple of centuries and then he'll be in the team for another 18 months uh, <laughs> off the back of that and um, I, I think some one of the Sri Lankan bowlers will be the top wicket taker purely because they'll have to do more bowling um, and uh, I think yeah England will share around bowling duties a little bit um, anyway that's, that's yeah, Sri Lanka v England looking forward to that um, 4 4 in the morning I think I'm doing a guerrilla cricket uh, are you one stint, of the sensible so. ones who's decided not to come on until at least the second session? Oh no, he's doing the morning. No, no doing? I'm doing. I'm doing a four thirty start uh, this Sunday. Surely, uh, because no one else would do it. <laughs> no, I, well, I am technical and director of Gorilla Cricket, and it's my bloody flat, and I have to be there every goddamn day of the first test. I got to get up at three thirty to get over there, and make sure everything's on. Yeah. Um, so, nightmare. Ross, do you want to do you want to run through what else is happening in cricket really quickly? Because we're we're gonna it's gonna be a ninety minute show, boys. Yeah, um, I was going to say um, for Pakistan. So we, we haven't spoken about Pakistan <laughs> for a long time. It's already funny. <laughs> um, Pakistan um, 
obviously put in some new new man, a new management structure. So they saw that Pakistan cricket was going through a bit of a transformation. There's some young players coming through. They needed to get rid of some deadwood. Um, so Misbah or Hack was not only kind of the like head of selection and then brought in some rules to put in some more rules around who could coach and who couldn't be a selector, etc. He ended up um, becoming the manager of Pakistan and they've um, suffered another defeat, 2-0 in tests to the best test team in the world, New Zealand, and then a 2-1 T20 defeat. Um, what doesn't make sense here, though, is that Pakistan's committee, and they have a lot of committees, pretty much insulting how the Pakistan cricket team is playing, <laughs> um, are reviewing the positions of Ms. Beryl Hack and Wakar Yunus as the bowling coach. Um this isn't surprising um, but, <laughs> because it's Pakistan, um, but they did give them three-year contracts. So what is the point in having a three-year contract, giving it to the management team, and then after being beaten by the best team in the world, review that position? Anyone for the logic on this one? There is. No, it's just Pakistan. They panic. You know, they change things left, right and centre. They're a very passionate lot. Maybe because you know, they lost go, to when us. When things go wrong, they just immediately change shit. For no reason yeah, whatsoever, you know. It's, it's, somebody's got to provide it, the comedy value, haven't it's, they? It's, <laughs> like, it's, kind of, it's kind of like Watford. Tony will like this. It's kind of like Watford. They change manager every two weeks because, you know, the result <laughs> went bad last week. You know, we better get a new manager in next week. It's uh, uh, knee-jerk reactions. I actually don't think Pakistan have been that bad. No, they haven't. Part. They, looked, yeah, they, they played, looked really promising against England. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I'm I mean, impressed. It, England had to pull off like one of the most miraculous wins yeah. of the last decade in the first test. Um, then they, they managed to pick up a slightly rain-affected draw in the third one, but that's sort of reasonably creditable. Uh, they, and then they've gone to New Zealand, where no Asian team's won for a decade. Hardly anyone's ever won there. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we got battered there a couple of years ago. I mean, New Zealand played astonishingly at home. I, yeah, and, they've been, and it's one I of the best New Zealand teams in a long a time. A while, yeah. yeah. And they've picked up some white ball wins along the way against England, who are one of the best white ball teams in the world, and against New Zealand, who are also one of the best white ball teams in the world, <laughs> in a T20 World Cup year. It's not yeah. like, yeah. look, you'd love your test match team to, to win every match, wouldn't you? I mean, we all would. But um, like, if failing that, being competitive in the ICC event that year is, is a good second, um, <laughs> or is a, is, a, is a joint good thing to, 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 to aim for. And, you know. Uh, so, that, so that's Pakistan. It, it doesn't help, does it? Just a final, but it doesn't help that like the best player in Pakistani history is the Prime Minister. Like that's yeah. a lot of pressure coming down <laughs> from above. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that is Pakistan, and I'm sure there'll be more over the coming weeks uh, from them. Um, Ireland have lost the first game against the UAE, and the second has been postponed until this weekend um, after a COVID outbreak, where I think the vice captain of the UAE uh, has got it and a couple of their players. Um, that's uh, quite a big, important game for Ireland. And I think um, they haven't played cricket in so long. We had uh, one of the Irish journalists on um, not too long ago, uh, or middle of last year, so a little bit longer. Um, and it's really important that they keep on playing. Um, they beat England last year, and to build on that, and Balburnie is skipper. Um, it's really difficult to be an Ireland player at the moment. Um, Bear, do you have any... Um, when Ireland play England, it's obviously massive. What's your opinion when it comes to the kind of associate nations playing here? Is it is it is it one of those things where they've got to play as much as possible, or uh, are you kind of just like it doesn't really matter at the moment? No, we've had a lot of talks about this on our show. I mean, we we got the rights to do. Um, we actually managed to get the radio rights to do England uh, Ireland's inaugural Test match against Pakistan. No one else won them, not for a grand. And we were at the ground <laughs> and we did that, and it was an amazing experience. They don't get enough cricket, and they don't play enough of the big sides. Um, but this, this it all goes back to the ICC, though, and how you organise world cricket. I mean, in World Cups and uh, in other sports, uh, all you know, you, you encourage the other sides to play, and they get opportunities to play the bigger sides because it's the only way you get up. In cricket, it seems to work the other way around. The big <laughs> sides don't want to play the little sides because a, it takes too long, and b, there's no TV revenue, and all this kind of thing comes into it. Uh, and they, they, therefore, they don't get the experience necessary. To improve. I mean, you look at the likes of Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. It took them an awful long time to get up to where they are even now. New Zealand. New Zealand. I mean, they. I mean, they're kind of lucky because they're an old imperial side, ex-British colony or whatever, you know. And uh, they they were dragged in through the Commonwealth system. But they just fifty-five years to win a test. Well, yeah, true. But they got to play the test, didn't they? And that's the thing, you know. And these guys need to be able to play against the better sides. And until they do, they're not really going to improve. And Ireland's got a big problem. You know, cricket in Ireland is such a minuscule sport compared to, you know, hurling or Gaelic games Gaelic or any of that yeah. stuff, rugby. Um, 
to, to, to get it through is going to take an awful long time and uh, they need all the support they can get. And the ICC doesn't hand out the money like it does, like FIFA does to football. So. Well, fort- fortunately, the Irish players are getting sunburned next to the, uh, the next to the pools, and they're in a rather fancy hotel, by the sounds of it. So, I imagine uh, they are. <laughs> in- enjoy it while it lasts, boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then finally, um, we're going to be taking bets. I think um, not officially, but um, on what Virat Kohli's new baby is going to be called. Oh my God. Um, I Firstly, reckon. Congratulations, Virat Kohli. Uh, I, was, yeah, I was wondering <laughs> if we were going to actually say that at any point. <laughs> we should get we should get that in. We love Virat Kohli on the cricket podcast. Is it a boy um, or a girl? <laughs> It's a girl. It is a, it is a girl. Yeah. Um, so maybe Verratti. Oh, that's what, exactly what I was just about to go for. <laughs> if it was a boy, it was obviously going to be a Virat Junior. But if it's a girl, it has to be Verratti. It's like Nigella Lawson. I mean, my name's <laughs> Nigel. I would never... What the fuck? I don't even like my own name. And uh, why you would call your daughter Nigella, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> um, I think Ashwina. Ashwina. Yeah. No. Well, after Remember Rabbit. That, that, there's a well, there's a little bit of a divide in the India team, isn't there, between between Kohli and Ashwin? What a what a what a olive branch that would be to for the mm-hmm. for the national team captain to extend to a senior player. I think um, I think they should take a leaf out of uh, Shane Warne's book and not go with anything that's too difficult to pronounce. So maybe something <laughs> like Sarah. <laughs> oh, God. I still I still right. can't I still can't Let's, get over um, that. I still can't get over the Steve yeah. thing. It's re- absolutely ridiculous. Well, uh, that's Shane Ward, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting as well. What presents people get as gift warming for the baby? What, what, what is it? Is it head wet? I don't know what it is. Would it be buy a present for a baby? Um, and maybe uh, my little Dony set would be quite useful <laughs> for them. Right, we have to wrap the show up. <laughs> um, thank you very much for listening to the cricket podcast, uh, Bear. We I don't think we said at the top of the show where people can find you. Um, so get that in now. Well, you can find us on our Facebook page. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on our website, radio, on TuneIn. Um, we're on Crick Tracker in India. We're everywhere. You can find us. There you Just go. That's Gorilla Cricket. Um, goodbye, everyone. And, and I guess goodbye from Ross and Max, too. <laughs>